everyone. So I asked a good friend uh, recently, if there was one thing that you could um, teach your people, um, if there's one thing you could teach executives around learning, um, what would that be? So um, what's, uh, if there's one thing, um, and this wonderful human came back and said, I would teach them the three basic ways to support learning. So that's what I'm going to share with you this week. It's another take on these ideas around how do we encourage learning, like what are the structures that are going on behind that process, um, what's happening in our brains when we learn. It's taking that a, another perspective on that. So um, maybe some of the things that I've shared with you already this month have really landed and been help, super helpful. Um, maybe they haven't. Pick and choose. Take what you need. Um, my intent here is to share a whole bunch of ideas and tools with you and for you to take what you gravitate towards, what resonates with you, um, and to use it and to implement it for the purpose of building yourself as a learner, building a learning team, building a learning organization. So three basic ways that our, um, that we support learning. And, and this is on a, on a brain level as well. So first up, you have chemical changes that happen uh, as, as this sort of first stage of learning. So as you're sitting here listening to me, today to chat, uh, your, your brain will be firing signals between neurons. This is the short-term memory stuff. So as you're listening, you'll be saying, you'll be maybe nodding along, yep, that makes sense, or shaking your head and saying, no, this makes absolutely zero sense. But you're, you're taking that information in, you are firing chemical signals between neurons in your brain, you're building short-term memories. And so if I was to talk to you at the end of this particular talk, or maybe tomorrow, um, you may be able to retain some of the information, but it's probably not sunk in. And if I asked you a couple of days from now, you probably wouldn't have retained a whole heap of what we've talked about today. So that's the first stage of those chemical signals that fire between neurons. Second stage is about how do we start to embed that a little bit more deeply. How do we build the structural changes that are required for us to actually learn this? Not simply to have a quick connection and go, yep, cool, that makes sense and move on. But how do we actually retain that? How do we make the structural changes? How do we support the connections between neurons? So not simply the signaling that's happening, but actually to build those connections so that we can build a more long-term memory of the type of things that we're talking about. And so that might look like, um, at the end of this talk, maybe you make some notes, um, maybe you go back and review those notes uh, on one or multiple occasions, you're starting to build those longer term structural changes into um, what's going on. And I think I shared earlier this month this idea of um, the, the path through the forest, the first time you walk through the forest to cut track. It's overgrown, there's tree branches lying down, there's roots, there's leaf litter, there's all the stuff to navigate. You're kind of cutting your way through the wilderness. But if you repeat that process, the second time, the third time, maybe you clear a few branches on your way, that track starts to form and over time, the, the grooves start to get a little bit deeper. Um, you know, it, those connections get stronger. That's that, that building of that structural change and starting to evolve into the third stage, which is what we call functional change. So this is where not only have we created those pathways, created those connections, but we've started to work with this material, with this information, to the point that it becomes habitual. And so this might look like not only taking notes and studying those notes over, over time um, and repeating that process, but maybe starting to go and look at different sources of information about neuroplasticity or how we learn or brain biology and so that you start to build up these other um, peripheral sources as well right and so over time because you're spending energy and investment in learning in that area um, more broadly than the specific as well so you're starting to broaden out that you're making more connections you're, you're firing off different signals over time you start to build the strength in those connections. That's that pathway becoming smoother because you're walking that track multiple times. Um, and so it becomes easier. It becomes easy to use, becomes very habitual. So those three stages again, chemical, simply sending the signals the first time. Structural, 
building those into connections, starting to build into slightly longer term memory, and then functional, starting to build that habit, starting to build that ease. Um, and so, yeah, the, probably the one call out here is that stuff is not easy. <laughs> it might be very simple, but it's not easy. That first time that you go to cut track is going to be really, really tough. It's going to take a lot of conscious effort on your part to work through that. It's not going to come easily. And so those early phases of learning, um, you know, I believe it's part of why when I was at high school, I excelled at the subjects that I was interested in because I had enough passion and excitement to get me over that repetition and the, the, the constant kind of that hard work of actually building those connections because I was excited about the subject. I was excited about where we were going. And so that got me through the hard work. Um, but this stuff takes time. It takes energy. It takes investment. It's not easy up front. And so as you're starting to build those new connections, you can have compassion for ourselves. We need to have compassion for our team as well because this is not going to be easy. This is not a once and done type of thing. This is something that needs that repetition and it needs to be crafted. And we need to have space for that to, to work and to come up. Um, we need to have a little bit of patience with some of this. And as long as we are being a little bit more structured in our approach around building in those opportunities for repetition, building in, like how do we start to build in those habits? How do we make this habitual, not just the fizz bang, um, but how do we start to build in repetition and, and longer term functional changes? That's when the magic really happens. And it does get easier as you go. So part of the reason it's really hard to build a learning organization is because up until now, our learning has often been captured through on paper analysis rather than real world experience. And so moving into direct customer feedback, shorter experimental timeframes, faster feedback loops, that's hard because it's not something that we're used to doing. And so it takes that constant encouragement and practice for us to continue to do that. But as we do, what's happening is we're building that muscle so that over time it gets easier and easier and easier. So your homework for this week, your homework for this, this particular episode is to go out and look at how are we actually approaching and structuring learning and change within our organization? Are we having one conversation and expecting that people have got it? Or are we repeating that? How have we drawn that thread between the last time we did that presentation to the CEO and the most recent one? How are we carrying that narrative? Where are we repeating the same message? Sometimes it takes two or three goes for it to actually sink in. I had one team that I worked with that were wanting to try and introduce cycle time. So this idea of um, the time taken from when we have the idea to when the values deliver, when the benefits are delivered for projects. And they were introduced to this concept the first time um, and it didn't fly. Can't do it, too hard, don't have the information available. It's, it's never gonna work. We can't get from idea to value come back around two years later, nothing had changed in the system in terms of the data that they were capturing, in terms of where that was sitting. It was still all being captured in the project management system, but when we reintroduced that concept to them, and granted we probably shouldn't have waited two years to do it, but when we reintroduced that concept to them, all of a sudden, ah, oh, well we could just make this the start point and this the end point, then we've got a baseline, we can start to measure that, then we can go and do the work on finding the better start point or finding the better end point. All of a sudden, that whole conversation about cycle time goes from too hard, like can't do it, to what can we do? And part of that was due to the fact that this team had been working for the that two-year interim around experimental um, learning methods, hypothesis-driven development, all of these things. They built that muscle around, now we know that when we're presented with our problem, let's just rough it out first and then work to improve. And so they had that muscle around do the minimum that you can to kind of get a result, see if that's working, and then iterate, then build forward. So when you're working with your teams, give them some grace, have some patience, and build in the repetition and the frequency. So not only giving them the space to figure it out, but as a leader, actively building in that repetition and that, that frequent feedback, making sure that they're getting the opportunity to practice. And so that way we can start to move from simply somebody's had a nice idea and we've, we've sent the signal and, and, and that's, that's happened to actually let's start to build that connection. And maybe as, as we go through, it becomes so important that we decide we're going to cement that into just the way that we work around here. 
So I hope you found that useful. And wherever you are in the world today, I hope you're having an awesome, awesome day. Go out there and smash it, and I will see you again real soon.